Tag and Brag Nation, welcome to the second edition of the Food Plot Chronicles. We've been preparing a couple of our fields and the first thing that we want to get in this year is corn. Corn really needs to be in by the middle of June if you want to get good production, you want to get good cobs out of your corn. So we chose to focus on this first. We have a great food plot right behind our house at camp and it's a great spot to test things out. The best way to learn about food plots is to experience. Go do, try, try new things. And that's exactly what this plot behind our camp is for. We don't hunt it a ton, so it's a great spot to test things out, try different things, see what works, see what doesn't, especially with the short growing season and the crazy weather conditions that we get in Western New York. Corn is really hard to grow. So you wanna ask us, why the heck are we growing corn? It's a good question. I asked myself the same thing. Corn makes the world go round. Corn is fuel for the deer, but it's also fuel for other things. You put a little corn in your car, get you from A to B. It's a huge challenge to grow because it's also fuel for crows, coons, bear, squirrel. The crows are the number one target for the corn seed. And they're gonna eat all the seed in the field, especially if it's visible on top of the soil. And when it does sprout about that high, they just peck their little beaks in the ground and pluck it out and eat that seed. Savages. That's why we keep a 22 in the mudroom at camp. But the real reason we're planting it is because it's fuel for the deer. The late season, when we get the worst, worst conditions in Western New York, when there's a foot and a half to two feet of snow, this is fuel, this is energy for our beloved deer. There's one other key factor about corn that is crucial for Western New York that really doesn't pertain to most other parts of the, mid the Midwest, the Midwest. Sometime in November, we're gonna get demolished with snow in New York. It just happens every year. Not only do we want the corn for food, but we want some cover for it as well. So when we're talking about putting corn up to use for access into some of our spots, which we'll talk about next week, the corn stays standing, the sorghum, the Egyptian wheat that we planted in past years falls to the ground, eliminates your access. The crows and the coons can literally be the devil for growing corn. You put all that hard work in to prepare the field, put all that hard work in to plant, things start sprouting up really nice, and before things can really take off and the excitement starts happening, they cut you down in your prime. It's like making the most beautiful, voluptuous, cold cut sandwich. And right as you're about to put that thing in your mouth, your brother's like, it's like locking your door at your house because you got the crib to yourself, you got your girl at home, wanna have a little fun. You go over, you put on a nice movie, you sit on the couch, you get up all cuddly wuddly with her, and five minutes into the movie, garage door opens, rents are home. We've read that one thing that can help the crows not get your corn seed is by planting it in the ground. And our buddy Ryan was nice enough to let us borrow his two row corn plant for this year. The backyard. <clears throat> this was all beans last year. We're gonna try something new this year. Never planted corn before, but it was the first time for everything. So, as you can see behind me, all this is pretty much dead. Dean sprayed it about two weeks ago. A little greenage coming up here, but shouldn't be a big deal. The ground is soft, so it's going to be perfect. We should be able to turn this thing one time and plant corn if everything goes well. But we all know that every time, not everything goes well. So, first things first, got to start turning the earth. Got to get on the, on the handy some dirt so Dave is out just starting to till some of our fields and what I'm doing right now is I'm actually using the Onyx maps to get the acreage of all of our plots so that I can calculate the fertilizer that we need and a little bit of corn seed we want to make sure we have enough fertilizer in the ground instead of taking more time to go to all your plots and kind of measure them walk them off whatever to get the acreage go to the area shape on your map tools and you can literally just draw a line around your plot perfectly and precisely and it gives you the acreage to the decimal point um, on all of your plots so I'm going through and doing that on all the plots that way I can add them up get the exact acreage I need that way I know the exact fertilizer we need I'm gonna go to the mill and uh, we can be efficient costly cost effective and uh, that way we don't have any left over as well sitting for a year in the garage so Perfect way to use Onyx Maps while you're planting your food plots. All right, so our buddy, our great buddy Ryan, let us use his corn planter two row, but we just got up here. Oh, we've never used this thing before, but we just had this. I think it's like a female piece that just comes from the hopper to this rubber tube that feeds the seed into the to the feeder, and uh, it rusted out completely and the tube is not long enough to 
go from this hopper down to this planter down here. So obviously no place is going to have this is an old John Deere two row planter. I ran the tractor supply but no one's going to have this piece. So I mean look at it. Like we didn't even we just set the uh, set the planter down and it literally just broke into like 12 pieces but there's nothing there anymore. So I saw this at Tractor Supply. Just a little oil gas funnel. Funnel duo. And I'm like, man, that thing looks about about right. So I just measured it up. <laughs> Look at that. We sit it on there. There's a little hole in the side of this in the hopper and there's one in the back, so I'm literally just gonna drill a little hole in there and the zip tie should be plenty. That hole is plenty big enough to corn seed to filter down there if we need to cut them we can but I don't think we need to. And look at that. It's gonna stick right up into there. And it won't even rust. That's how it stays right down there. Look at that. Well, folks, Dino is putting the final passes through the corn. We're getting the whole backyard planted before this rain. I can feel the rain coming in. It's always good when you're planting right before a rain because you know it's going to get wet. You know it's going to get the water it needs when the sun pops out in a day or two. Everything's going to be just germinating, germination at its finest. But a couple mishaps with the... Uh, with the corn planter we got this tilled fertilized planted we got a whole nother section on the other side of the road tilled and prepped for the next time that we're up here all good things i i can't even i don't even want to jinx it but we are a little ahead of schedule despite the weather as of late so that's different for us that's for sure but it was a good day today a lot of work it's almost eight o'clock already your boy needs a shower and a sandwich and uh, we will see y'all next time on Food Plot Chronicles. Peace. During the next week, we have a little more corn to plant, and we're also gonna work on putting in some more of our sorghum and Egyptian wheat blend, our plot screen, for access. That is the next key, planting things that grow tall for access. How well this screenage grows to block off some of our plots from the road, as well as to allow us to access into some of these spots can literally make or break our success for our fall hunts in Western New York. So be sure to catch next week's episode of the Food Plot Chronicles. Hey man, popcorn, candy corn, unicorn, sweet corn, don't matter to me man, take them back in seven.